interesting thing about anesthesia is that patients who are under anesthesia, after they wake up, have no conception of elapsed time whatsoever. And I think the passage of time is, is, a, is a key feature of subjective consciousness. So consciousness is just absent. It's gone. A brain scanner connected to the patient reveals a startling clue to how anesthesia works. During the surgery, a bright flashing halogen light is used to help stimulate brain response. The bright light pierces her taped shut eyelids. The EEG monitor shows that the patient's brain is responding just as if she were awake. We see that the brain is quite active and there's all kinds of uh, evoked potentials going on. Going under is not like sleep, and this fascinates Hammeroff. I first got interested in consciousness, how the brain produces experience uh, in college. In medical school, I was doing a research elective in a, a lab studying cancer, and I was looking at how cells divide. Hammeroff then learned about microtubules. Microtubules are hollow tubes that can be found in all living cells. 30 years ago, he had his eureka moment, and since then, he has formed a complex theory that microtubules are the location of what some would call the soul. In my opinion, microtubules are the origin of consciousness, specifically quantum computation uh, synchronized to gamma EEG inside neurons in the brain is the origin of consciousness. Hameroff's theory has shocked the world of neuroscience. He's basically saying that consciousness may be found and quantified, that it has substance, and that it survives the body. I'll stand by this, even though it's a bit controversial. It's conceivable that when a patient has a cardiac arrest or dies, the quantum information that involves consciousness isn't necessarily destroyed. or It may actually just, just sort of leak out and remain in the universe and remain entangled. If the patient's revived, then it can go, it can go back in and, and the patient had a near-death and out-of-body experience. If the patient dies, it's conceivable to me that that entity, which you could call the soul, remains entangled indefinitely. And so it's conceivable that the soul is a real entity in terms of quantum information embedded in the fundamental level of the universe. What Hammeroff is saying is that the 21 grams myth is basically true. The soul has substance. Though it can't be weighed, the information can be measured. Hammeroff's shocking theory has caught the attention of the world's top physicists, who think that he may have stumbled onto understanding how the mind and soul separate. Complex quantum physics may hold the key. Quantum theory is pretty intriguing and is not necessarily consistent with an, a simple materialist understanding of, of the universe. The things are more complicated than we're aware. But I think people who just immediately discount it as being sort of um, mystic mumbo jumbo, I think they're being too quick with that. The quantum theory does challenge us to try to really understand the world the physical world at its core, and it may well be more complicated or more wondrous than, than what a lot of people realize. <laughs>